Now, can someone tell me, who's this guy? This is <laughs> Sir, Sir um, Isaac Newton, and he's generally regarded as um, an, and I use that word very deliberately, an inventor of calculus, this topic, this concept, this big idea, this branch of mathematics we've been looking at. However, you need to know that alongside Isaac Newton, there's this guy um, who is four years younger, who you need to know about not just because he has such epic hair, um, <laughs> but because... Uh, number one, he's a co-inventor of calculus. It took us a long time. They actually had a big argument, a big spat about it. Um, Newton was really unhappy. He was like, you stole this from me. Um, but more importantly, for the purposes of this lesson today, um, Leibniz's notation, I'm actually going to write his name for you because it's so important you should have it. Yeah, I know, right? That was so 30 seconds ago. Um, <laughs> right with me, right? His name was Gottfried. Wilhelm. Leibniz. They just had such epic names back in the day. <laughs> Leibniz came up with a different way of writing derivatives, just a different notation, but it ended up being the one which is far more powerful and useful for us today. And it's the one I'm going to introduce to you this morning. So you can make a little heading for me, which is Leibniz's derivative notation. Say it again, Tanam. Uh, Gottfried. Gottfried. Wilhelm. <laughs> He's definitely German or Austrian. Oh, yes. All the great mathematicians at that time were. Okay, so let's put Gottfried and his, um, <laughs> because you're worth it, um, here away. And um, let's think back to the derivative notation that we have currently so far explored, right? We've got this idea, this is just revision, right, of the difference quotient the difference quotient, and it's this long fraction, right, when we were just thinking about gradient, um, I'll give you a reminder, the bottom is h, that's the easy part, what's the numerator? Um, it's f of x plus h. Very good, f of x plus h, and Mine then, of yeah, we take the difference, that it's the difference quotient after all, and then we divide, so this is, we got this from gradient, right, rise over run. And then we said, well, this is just an approximation. This is like measuring Usain Bolt over 9.69 seconds, or one second, or half a second. It's pretty close, but what if we could do it precisely, not over a sort of a, a chunk of time, but over an infinitesimally small chunk of time. So what we did was we applied this thing called a limit. Do you remember that? Right? So we said if you have an initial f of x, then we can have this gradient function, the derivative, not an approximation, an exact thing, if we take this guy and we apply a limit out the front, right? So we took the same difference quotient like so, and we said this is just not approximately close to the gradient, this is exactly the gradient at any particular value of x. So we've got our f of x notation, our f dash, and this is what we call differentiating, right? Okay, so we have this notation. We want to introduce to you a different way of talking about the same thing, and I'm going to show you why this ends up being so useful. So here comes Leibniz's alternative. We often, we often talk about functions not as f of x or g of x or h of x or all those kinds of things, but we often have a wrong color. We often have a function and we just call it y. Right? Y equals any of those things. Right? We've seen this before. I could have asked you, please graph Y equals this, or Y equals this, Y equals this, etc. Y is our vertical axis, X is our horizontal axis. So we've seen this before, right? If we've got Y as our function of X, right, we can introduce this new way of talking about the same derivative. We can say the derivative, I'm going to write it in this weird way, I'm going to explain it, right? And some of you might have seen this notation before. This is Leibniz's innovation, right? He said, I want to, instead of this dash notation and all that, I'm going to call the derivative dy on dx. Now, what does this mean? Let me explain. Um, think back, think back, the D actually doesn't stand for derivative, that's just a convenient um, coincidence. It, it also, I'll, I'll tell you what the D stands for. Let's think about when you've got, back in, um, back in like chemistry land, right? You know how you might get, I uh, don't know, I'm, gonna, I'm going to badly um, show my lack of knowledge of chemistry right now. Um, you know how we wrote chemical sort of, what are they called? Um, reactions, right? Reactions. Things happen, right? And then you get some other products at the end. Does anyone remember, what's the symbol we write up here? 
We write a little symbol here. It's actually a Greek letter. We write a, a delta. It's a triangle, but it's, it's the Greek letter delta. What does it indicate? It indicates change, right? Now, in maths, we've sort of taken over this for discriminants, right? But here in calculus, this ends up being useful because calculus is all about how are things changing? What's the difference, right? So this letter D here, it's a very, very shorthand way of saying um, D for delta. It's a change in Y compared to a change in X. In fact, that's exactly what I would say. The easiest way to understand what does dy on dx mean? It means change in y divided by change in x. Now that is a bit of a mouthful, and that's why we usually say rise over run. But that's all it is. How does y change? How does x change? Why can't we just change it to a triangle? Why don't we just change it to a triangle? Like just write this? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay. Now the short answer is. Remember, coming back to this guy over here, right? We have to go from this guy, which is the gradient of the secant, to this guy, which is the gradient of the tangent. We do it by means of this weird limit business, right? So in fact, there's a lot happening underneath here. It's not just a fraction, even though for all intents and purposes that we're going to be interested in, I will treat it and I can treat it as a fraction. But in fact, this delta y and delta x, it actually appears earlier on in the technical definition for where this comes from. So that's why we don't use the deltas there. They actually mean something else which I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull back the veil on that right now because frankly we don't need to. Okay? But if you want, you're welcome to, I'll, I'll give you the full detailed thing later. You'll end up at the end thinking, do I really need to know all of that? No, you don't for the purposes of what we've got now. But that's why we don't use the delta. Okay? All right. So this is the idea. dy on dx, when you see that, what that indicates is um, your function, y, your original function, differentiate that thing. Okay? Now, I want to talk us through. I've got, I've got a list written here. right? I've got one, two, three. I've got three big advantages to Leibniz's notation, okay? And each one is actually important for a concept that we're going to learn and we're going to, a skill we're going to use, okay? So firstly, <coughs> excuse me, advantage number one, I'll call it A1, right? It reminds us that when you go F dash, right? When you apply this process of bringing that power out the front, reducing the power by one, what you're doing is you're working with a fraction. Right? This F dash notation, it kind of disguises the fact that what you're doing is, is this. This is what you're doing. But we have automated this process because we proved it yesterday. We we're like, I don't need to go through first principles for this, which is a big relief because for first principles, I would have to work out what on earth that is. And I, I don't even know what that is. Like that, that power is too high for me and it would take me forever. Right? It would just be disgusting algebra. So we've automated this process. We don't have to go through first principles anymore. But we want you to remember, that's actually what's going on underneath. Whenever you do 8x to the 7, whenever you differentiate anything in the future, this is what's really going on. Rise over run, rise over run, change in y, change in x. That's advantage number one. Advantage number two. It gives us a way, <laughs> we're going to make sure I get all my details here, right? It gives us a way to indicate what our derivative is about. Now, let me explain what I mean. When you see dy on dx, it indicates this is a derivative comparing y to x. Think back to when we were having a look at Usain Bolt, right? When we first drew, in fact, go back to that page. When we drew, do you remember we drew a Cartesian plane and we, we tried our best to draw a, a sort of curve that illustrated how he ran. Do you remember that? Can you just go find that spot? You should have like two or three graphs on top of each other which have Usain Bolt on them, right? On that set of axes, we drew it like this, roughly. But when we're talking about Usain Bolt, we did not have an x-axis or a y-axis. What did we have? Uh, we were comparing distance and time, right? So we had actually not an x-axis, we had a t-axis. And um, this distance here, well, because of my use of the letter d over here, I'm not going to say d for distance. Far more common than the physics people know, um, I would call this actually displacement and I would call it s, right? Because d's already taken. Now, if I want to say the derivative of that, I would not write dy on dx. I am comparing this displacement, s, with this time, t. So instead of writing dy on dx, I would write, for example, ds 
on DT. Now we're going to start to encounter places where you've got different things being differentiated and you're paying attention to different pronumerals. This becomes really, really important. Whereas this notation is just saying, hey, just, just differentiate. What are you looking at? Or just you work it out, okay? This is being a little more explicit about and that's very, very important. So out of this, by the way, out of this particular advantage, it gives us something called the differential operator. So I want us to write this down, right? The differential operator, an operator is something which you put in front of something else and it, it performs something. Like for example, sine is an operator. You'd say sine of 30 degrees, do something to 30 degrees. Um, think back to last year when we very, very briefly got introduced to logs. Logs are an operator. You'd say log of this number. So you take a number and you pop it in, right? The differential operator is this thing out the front of y, right? So what I would say is d on dx, whatever is going to come next, I want you to differentiate it and have a look at the x's. These are the things I want you to bring the power out the front, reduce by 1, etc. right? So the way you might write this is d on dx of y, that is dy on dx. You can see how that y just kind of jumps up the front, up the top there. Okay. So this is really important to see. What this means is we can say when you read this, you say, oh, the next thing that comes, for example, you know, don't write this down, but um, whatever is over here like x to the 7 plus 3x plus 2, right? Whatever comes after that, what this is telling you to do is differentiate that, right? It's an operator. It has to operate on something. Please do not write d on dx equals a thing, right? Because there's no thing that it's being operated on, right? And there needs to be something in there, like y or a function of some kind, any of these things, okay? Uh, I'm telling you this specifically because when I got introduced to the differential operator when I was your age, I did not understand what it was. So I wrote this because I was like, I don't know, it's just the derivative thing, so just off you go. It's not a derivative, it's an operator that gives you a derivative, okay? All right, so I promised three advantages. First one was it reminds you it's a fraction. Second one was it tells you what you're dealing with, what actual objects you're differentiating. Lastly, I've run out of space down the bottom, which is a bit unfortunate. But lastly, and this is something we're gonna get into in the second half of this lesson, it allows derivatives to interact with each other. Derivatives, can interact with each other. Now, that's a bit vague right now because it's leaning into the next concept what we're going to learn, but I want you to know, like, why are we going to the effort of introducing new notation? The old notation is fine, like we really can use it, but the new notation is better for doing all of these things.